we nearly scraped the roof. I'm a little skeptical. <laughs> I don't know if skeptical's the word. I think intrigued and confused. Much better. We nearly scraped the roof on the last parking spot. Very small clearance. We figured it out in the doorway. So we backed out onto the street, found a higher clearance parking garage, and we're trying to squeeze this massive truck in here. Our truck is not made for big cities. Neither are we. <laughs> That's true. Find me a farm. We are here in Madison, Wisconsin. We took care of a little business, got the tires rotated this morning. Yeah, that was moderately irritating. For the first time, I'm disappointed with discount tires, specifically in Madison, Wisconsin. I'm not sure what the point is of booking an appointment online when they don't pull your truck in until about an hour after you get there. Um, so two hours for a tire rotation. I think they actually completely replaced our tires faster at the one in Fort Smith, Arkansas. So a little irritating, but the staff was We're here. really nice though. They were nice. We did drop by the University of Wisconsin to check out the Red Gym Castle. The building was dedicated in 1894. It's been used for quite a number of things. A gym, obviously, is one of them. In 1970, it was actually an ROTC training facility and it was firebombed due to people opposing the Vietnam War. Hmm. They decided to return it back to student activity, so now it's used for events and various things like that. So beautiful building, packed full of history, so we at least had to drive by and take a peek at it. But now we're headed to the Capitol building. It's the only Capitol building known to be built on an isthmus, which is a narrow strip of land connecting two land masses. I was just about to ask what that was, so I'm glad you explained it for everybody. <laughs> I had to Google it. Let's get a bite to eat. I'm, I'm hungry. That, that delay at discount tire put us well into lunchtime. You're gonna try one more flight up? We're lost already. We're not even out of the parking garage. <laughs> so the numbers go up as you so, go down. I think we didn't realize we went down under the ground three levels to park. There's a band circling the Wisconsin Capitol. Pretty neat. The observation deck at the state capitol here in Wisconsin was pretty incredible, really busy. Just be aware that there are a lot of stairs to get to the final location. So if you have a problem with stairs, there's quite a few flights to climb. Even once you reach the point, you could take an elevator. Yeah. On the ground floor, there's a, a circle in the center of it where if you sing or speak loudly, it's almost like a vortex, similar to Center of the Earth in Tulsa. So there were some people trying to sing and, and uh, make noises in the center. That was pretty neat. And it does work. The capital is beautiful. The campus is beautiful. The downtown area is great. We found a nice little restaurant to have some tacos. And let's go see what else the city has. Past a Thai restaurant named Sai Bai Thong. And I have a real aversion <laughs> to anything with the name Thong in it and eating there. Just like furs, anything with hair in the name, I'm not eating there. 
It's either been... Angel hair pasta? No. <laughs> no, and for those of you who don't know, Furs is a restaurant. Furs is a buffet restaurant in Fort Smith, Arkansas that we refuse to eat at because it literally has hair right in the name. But yeah, so, soy by thong or however you say it. It's either been between your toes or between something else and either way, I don't want to eat there. Same reason that you're traumatized and won't eat at Wendy's? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> do the math, folks. I mean, it doesn't, it just doesn't sound good. It's either gonna taste like a Wendy, smell like a Wendy, or it's gonna give them to you on the way out the door. Madison, Wisconsin was really cute and a lot of fun. Now, the city trips did what city trips do for us, and they wear us out faster than us working a full day of hard labor in the sun, I think. It does drive some anxiety because not only are you in a new place trying to figure out where to park a big truck, you've got all kinds of pedestrians and bicyclists and stuff like that to watch out for. So you gotta keep your head on a swivel in these bigger cities, especially mm -hmm. in the Midwest where people are very, very active, which we'd love. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy seeing just people out walking and moving and seeing the sights and enjoying things. It's always a really cool vibe, but for the driver, it's a little stressful, but it was definitely worth the trip. I think we're gonna take the dogs over to the beach, let them run and play a little bit. There's rain coming in tonight. So we're going to do that before that happens and settle in for the night. We woke up to rain this morning and about 20 degrees lower than where it was yesterday. I still chose to rock shorts today. I don't know why because it's really cold. Our pantry and fridge have been empty for a little bit. We've been putting it off, so we need to go fill those. So I thought that I would mention a tool that I use to help budget on the grocery bill, and that's a grocery app. Now, I use Walmart because that's what I have, and I'm too stubborn to go download anything else. But you can use this anywhere, and here's how. I use this regardless of where we're at as a grocery list. So as I think of things, I'll pop pack of toilet paper on the list. When we're ready to hit the store, I graze over it. I look at my favorites list, see if we need to add anything to round out the list. So I know my target total that I'm looking for each week. It totals it out for me. If I'm way over, I look through the list, see if there's anything that I need to remove or save for later. So it still holds it in there for me so I don't forget later. And then as I'm walking through the store, regardless of whichever store it is, as we pick up items, we remove it from the list and we start over each week. It's just a fast, easy way for us to keep up with our groceries and it's a little way to, to budget each week for us. It's all about getting in and out. Now that we broke the bank on groceries and it's very, very cold. And I even think it was colder in Walmart than it was out here. But now that all our money's gone, we don't get to do anything the rest of the day. <laughs> so we're gonna be staying in, maybe catch a movie. We're just gonna relax today because Angela tells me I gotta do a bunch of hiking tomorrow. I'm just hoping it warms up a little bit. We'll be active tomorrow. So today the weather's much better. We are at Devil's Lake State Park. It was something that we had on our list anyways and then one of our subscribers suggested this place as a wonderful place to visit. That kind of sealed the deal on that one. So that sealed the deal. And we're here and we're gonna show you a little bit. We're excited. Now oh, it's slippery. some burial mounds here they've actually found human remains here but what's really interesting is they found a prehistoric bird here 
The bird was about 115 feet long and it had a wing spread of about 240 feet. They put this marker here in 1916. This is pretty interesting, right here by the lake. So we've enjoyed Devil's Lake State Park. They do have a lot of hiking and different recreation that you can do here. You can swim, things the like that. Is, the, the lake is beautiful. It is very pretty. We did the two hikes. They were difficult, but they were short. And that's kind of the attraction here. So we wanted to hit those for sure. Make sure to wear appropriate shoes because some of those rocks are slippery even when it's dry outside. So super slick. No flip flops here. We took our own advice today. We hopped over just about five minutes to Pewitt's Nest Gorge and nothing will load. So we're just gonna walk this trail. It's a pretty prominent trail. There's only one. So we're gonna walk it and see what we find and hopefully we find something. Huh? If not, we'll turn back. No cell phone service, so who knows where we're at. <laughs> That was a quick and easy little sightseeing. What's happening? We're trying something today that we're not 100% sold on. So we came to a place that was suggested to us. Thank you, Amy. I have done this much research on it. I'm not 100% sure what we're getting into, but what we've seen I'm a little skeptical. <laughs> I don't know if skeptical is the word. I think intrigued and confused. So far, the only thing, the only words used to describe this place from people that have visited is odd, unique, creepy. <laughs> we're we're intrigued enough that we're going to pay good money to go figure this out. Yeah, we're kind of fighting a weather delay today. We've had a lot of rain and showers in the vicinity. So this was about a 20 minute drive from our campground and we got a little break in the radar and we thought, let's go try to fit this in so we get something out of today. So buckle up guys, let's go. It says to cover the entire acreage, you need to allow anywhere from- Two to five hours, it looks like. Yeah. Kind of waiting on ninjas to come flying out of the tree and start doing karate and i think for 76 bucks for two people i should get a karate show but still this is very pretty at first glance this started in 1945 when a guy was inspired by this beautiful rock and chose to have a picnic there he built his dream home on the rock and then in 1960 it actually opened to the public if you like art and architecture you would like this a lot. Yeah, it's beautiful. The little garden, it's really peaceful. It really is pretty here. So when you come in, it's suggested that you buy these tokens. The tokens are to play music out of the little machines that the guy created throughout his life here. So let's, let's give one a try. Every time you think that you're coming to the end, it keeps coming.
Well, it didn't take us five hours, but it did take us a solid two. And we kept moving. I feel like we were moving pretty quick. Just because you get trapped in there and you don't know where you're at at any point and you just follow the ropes. And then as soon as you think it's about to end. There's more. There's more. <laughs> I think by the two hour mark, we were kind of looking for the end. I feel like we were inside of his mind at yeah. points. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. It's definitely something if you're in a hurry, save it for a day you're not in a hurry. There's a lot of beauty to it. There's some creep factor to it. A good way to spend a halfway rainy day. We're here at New Life Lavender and Cherry Farm in Baraboo, Wisconsin. We paid just a few bucks to come tour the farm. Then they have a huge store of all kinds of stuff. They have food, they have fresh pies, they have drinks, they have salsas and jarred things that you can get, all kinds of lotions. Sprays and smells. But the smell and the, the sight's just nice. We just kind of wanted to walk around and take it in. They have such a demand for photography sessions here that they have days and hours set aside for people to uh, rent it out for photography. The farm has over 25 different variety of lavender here on the grounds. And like 14,000 plants in total. Yeah. yeah. It's huge. It's beautiful. Just a really peaceful place to relax for a few minutes before we get on to our next adventure. Yeah, this is a nice stop. We're slamming our electrolyte drinks before we head out paddle boarding on Mirror Lake at Mirror Lake State Park. It's just a, a small little body of water but it's still so we thought it'd be a nice calm <laughs> paddle board experience. The electrolyte drinks are just coconut water fresh squeezed orange, fresh squeezed lime, half of a lemon, and some Himalayan salt. It's a little spendier to do it that way than electrolyte packets, but it has a lot of those, those real important minerals in it, the potassiums and the magnesiums and things like that, that your true electrolyte minerals. Yeah, they do. They do a good job keeping you hydrated, so. They do. It's so quiet out here, all you can hear is nature and your paddles. This is a no-wake lake, so even motorized vehicles have to go at no-wake speed. This moss or whatever it is is getting so thick, it's making it a little harder to paddle. I'm pretty sure I've got a big like glob of moss right on my back fin. feel good while we're out on the paddle boards and then as soon as we sit down and get still we feel it <laughs> so I think we've been paddling for a little over two hours two two and a half hours we're a little pooped we're gonna go home relax have a nice dinner it's still early yet yeah I think it'd be a good night I think it'd be a good night to have a little campfire do a little grilling yeah kind of I kept, like that kind of kept the night off right let's do that well that's a week in Sauk City, Wisconsin. This has been a really cool place. It's not, it's not Yellowstone. It's not the biggest thing that sticks out to you, but it's a great little hidden gem in Wisconsin, just south of the Wisconsin Dells, and we love it. This has been a great time. Buddy's River RV Resort has been nice. We loved having the beach right here that we could just walk the paddle boards down and go for a ride. There's a ton of historical markers and yeah. state parks within less than an hour from you, 30 minutes to an hour tops. 
and then the Wisconsin Dells, of course. So yeah. there's a lot here. We have a farmer's market across the street. We could walk across the bridge to a number of restaurants. And the original Culver's. Or the original Culver's. It's been nice. We only have one rainy day, a couple cool days, but we're gonna get up in the morning and rock it out. We're gonna hit the road for a travel day tomorrow and we'll see you guys at the next episode. We'll see you there. There is a fee to get into the Wisconsin State Parks. It's $16 a day for out-of-state residents, $38 for the annual. Right now. Uh, right now, in June of 2014. In June of 2024. I did use the kiosk and tried to buy it. This isn't 2024. Right now in June of 2023. How bad does my hair look today? Was pretty incredible. Really busy. Great to use. Um,